let us reinforce some ideas about geons. So just some questions to begin with. In fact, most of this lecture will be in the form of questions for you to think about as we go through the lecture. Okay, so what geom would you use to create a line chart? Okay, so again, uh, you can guess from the general naming patterns for geoms that you would use geom line as the geom for creating a line chart. Okay, so if you of course run this code, what's going to happen is that it's going to draw a line connecting all of the points starting from the lowest value of the x-axis and it's going to create a point. So this particular chart may not be very useful, but generally geom line is quite useful for time series analysis. In this particular case, not particularly useful, but I just wanted to highlight the fact that geom line is what you would use. Okay, so here I'm asking you a question. Run this code in your head and predict what the output will look like. Okay, and then of course you can run the R code itself and check if your prediction was correct. That's a very good thing to do. There's no sense in just running it directly and seeing what happens because I want you to look at this as a way to understand, uh, to clarify your understanding of how ggplot works. Okay, so just think about it a little bit. Think about uh, how this is, uh, what this is going to look like and then run it and see if it actually looks like what you thought. Okay, so maybe at this point you can pause the video a little bit and then on paper maybe sketch out what this is going what you think it's going to look like and then run it and see okay this should not be very difficult because we have actually seen this code itself earlier okay i assume you've returned after giving your answer so we are saying ggplot data equals mpg fine and x and y are mapped to displacement and highway fine so uh, that we've got that color equals drive okay and there are two layers, point, smooth. So clearly there are going to be two, two layers in the output. So you're going to have a set of points and you're going to have one or more lines, okay? So let's first look at the point geom. Well, we're going to have one point for every point of the data set, no problem. And we have said color equals drive. That means every point will be colored depending upon the drive. So that's what the point layer is going to look like. Smooth layer has SE equals false. So clearly the confidence interval gray band is not going to be there. But the color layer, since we have defined it at the GG plot level, the color layer will also apply to geom smooth. Okay, so we won't have one line. Instead, we'll have three lines, one for each value of drive. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like. No band because SE equals false. Three lines because color equals drive is it applies to both geom point and geom smooth because we defined it at the level of GG plot itself. So it carries for both of them and therefore the lines are colored differently and the points are colored depending upon the drive. And SE equals false says no, uh, no confidence limits. Okay, so this much we could have predicted that this is going to be, of course we don't know the actual data so we can't exactly predict the graph but we can say the point layer is going to have points of different color. And uh, the smooth layer is going to have not one line, but as many lines as there are values for drive. And the line color is going to be also determined by that. So all of that we can predict just by looking at the code. Okay, again, why not just one smooth line? Because color equals drive. What does the SC argument to geom smooth do? Well, we know now. It, controls whether the confidence limits are shown or not. Okay, so you see two lines, two sets of code here. Will these two, will the output of these two pieces of code look the same or will they look different? Okay, so once again, I would encourage you to pause the video and then make a, make a selection. Are they going to be same or are they going to be different? And then come back and revisit the discussion. Okay, so I assume that you've got your answer as to whether these two things are going to be the same or different. And of course, the correct answer is that they are going to predict uh, to output exactly the same chart. Why is that the case? Well, here the data is MPG. Here also the data is MPG for both the layers, right? So the two layers are going to work with exactly the same data. Now let's look at the mappings. The mapping here is x equals 
displacement y equals highway and since that is done at the ggplot level it applies to point and smooth right so both of these layers are going to have displacement on the x-axis highway miles on the y-axis here too although we have not put anything in the ggplot uh, call we have not specified the data we have not specified the mapping but the two layers have exactly the same data and mapping uh, with each other and they are the same as what you see here okay therefore effectively they will produce the same result but of course the first is preferable because there is no duplication in case you want to make a change and see the results you will just be able to make the change in one place otherwise you may have to do it in two places here and of course in general we may be working with many layers in a complex plot as we will see later in the course and therefore we'll just add be adding a lot of extra work if we do the if we follow the latter approach try this one so we've got two charts shown here so i'm saying write the r code to plot these two graphs the second one has one line per value of drive i'm saying that because there's no legend to tell us what these lines are okay again just uh, maybe take a piece of paper stop the video and write out the code to the best of your ability and then come back and revisit uh, and continue the uh, follow the continuation of the discussion okay so i assume you've provided your answer and you're ready now to check it now a couple of things to look at first of all in this code we've got one smooth line and the points are all of the same color so clearly no color mapping or any other kind of grouping. All the data is being plotted as one chunk. That's one important point to consider. Another point which may not have been very obvious to you, and not, not very important, but I just wanted to illustrate, is that the dots are actually quite big, not normal size. So if you looked at the previous slides in which we had the dots, so obviously I have increased the size of each of the points in the scatter plot, right? So we need to pass the size aesthetic. Okay, so here everything is same except that the points are all the same. So no division or any change for display of the points. But there are three different smooth lines. So clearly the geom smooth has some kind of a division into three. And we said one line per value of drive. So clearly geom smooth has to be divided into three sets depending on one per value of drive. Okay, the fact that there is no legend and the fact that they all otherwise look identical tells us that the group aesthetic was what was used. Okay, so the first one says uh, ggplot data is mpg mapping is x is displacement y is highway and geom point and since this slightly bigger maybe size equals 3. Okay, of course you can't looking at the thing you cannot say the size is 3 something but to understand that I manipulated the size aesthetic but not really the size aesthetic because aesthetic means that the display depends on some value of the data set. No, here it doesn't. It's just a fixed value and therefore it cannot be inside the aesthetic. Okay, so notice that size equals 3 is a direct argument to geom point. It's not a mapping. Okay, here if we had said AES size equals 3, that would have been very, that would have been incorrect right because uh, 3 is a fixed value it's not something that depends on the data okay so that's important to understand and as i had said earlier the second plot uh, uh, geom smooth of course we've got smooth and se equals false because there is no uh, confidence intervals so this is in as far as the first plot is concerned for the second plot it's going to be everything is going to be almost the same except that for geom smooth we're going to have the group aesthetic Okay, group equals drive because that is what is going to divide the data into three sets and make it plot one line per set. Okay, so again, this slide is important because it's showing you that when you do grouping or any other kind of divisions, then you will get multiple lines for the uh, smooth aesthetic. Of course, we could have said geom smooth method equals LM. If we had said that, then we would have got the straight lines for a linear regression instead of the curved lines that come from locally smoothed lines. 
again one more point here write r code to plot these two graphs okay again you don't have to take a lot of time just quickly jot down something based on your understanding again pause the video and once you're done come back to the video and follow the discussion okay, i think it's very useful for you to uh, think about these things and put something down on paper because all of that really helps to reinforce your understanding because all of these things we have covered so we are only repeating okay so i'll give you a little time to pause the video and then continue okay i assume you've given your thought to these two things now the points to the difference between these two is that first of all this has only one line smooth line this has three smooth lines right so clearly the second graph you can see that the smooth layer is just simply geom smooth okay there's really nothing uh, and of course the x and y are the same for both the layers so we can do the x and y plotting uh, mapping within ggplot and the geom smooth layer is going to be just geom smooth nothing but each point is colored differently right in fact that applies to both of the plots so in both the cases the point geom has to have the color aesthetic mapped to drive okay the point geom has to have the color aesthetic mapped in both cases but only in the first case notice that the lines for the three smooth lines are all of different types and therefore we need to map the line type aesthetic only for the smooth layer right of course line type doesn't apply to the point uh, scatter point plot layer at all okay so therefore the result is going to look like this that's the first one okay because here the line type equals drive sc equals false because there is no gray band okay and here we said color equals drive size equals 3 again uh, you know the points are bigger than before so size equals 3 okay and notice that we chose to map the x and y aesthetic at the gg plot level because that is common to both of the layers and the color aesthetic we put only in geom point because that applies only to geom point and the line type aesthetic applies only to geom smooth so we put that only in geom smooth okay this is very good practice uh, that putting common aesthetics in ggplot and putting aesthetics specific to certain layers only in their layers that's a good idea okay the code for the second thing is going to look almost identical except that geom smooth is going to have only se equals false no line type because there is only one line 